This is still why in the morning we are continuing with a conversation on creating safe and nurturing environments for our children and in turn strengthening our families. With us is Beatrice Ogutu from Investing in Children and Societies. We were just talking about how skillful parenting is useful to the youths. And now um, maybe you can tell us, you know, with this year's theme after on International Day of the Family, which is um, maybe you can tell us the theme and how we can use that to strengthen our families and protect our children. Thank you, Ms. Stephanie. Uh, the International Day of the Family was a day set aside in 1994 by the UN mm -hmm. to be able to honor families, but also appreciate the challenges that families go through, and in so doing, enable governments and others to uh, create enough policies, uh, create an enabling environment for families to thrive. Mm -hmm. And it is quite critical to highlight the problems that families experience. From a young person's perspective, you know, it's really common what to aseme, you know, uh, our to elect we are wazazi wa tuelewi wako analog you know exactly um and therefore it becomes quite critical to kufanya wazazi waelewe our young people mm -hmm. to educate themselves what is happening around what are our young people going through and um, therefore how can parents be supportive enough of our young people ndio tuelewe wasi to accuse her to elevi sisi tuko analog so the burden is on the parent also to educate themselves what are the challenges and the opportunities that youth have and how can i support my young person mm -hmm. how can i support my daughter and son so the theme for this year is uh, families urbanization and my mm -hmm. And we are appreciating the benefits that come from my urbanization. You know, there's uh, opportunity to have better education, better services. There's uh, diversity, you know, cross-cultural diversity when people come together mm -hmm. in cities. Um, those are really good things. Infrastructure really develops the increased opportunities for employment. But there's also the downside of urbanization if it is not well managed and checked. We have seen a lot of uh, issues around uh, parents working late hours in the evening and the commute system is not really favorable so we all mm -hmm. get at home at nine at what point do i have that space to discuss with my young people okay. so our public service systems need to really be checked to support parents in their role if i leave work <laughs> at five i don't have to get home at 10 you know yeah because then i need that space and then you see because of that challenge sometimes i also leave at 5 30 so at what time do i spend with my young person in mm -hmm. the home because I live at 5 30 I come back at 10 I'm tired mm -hmm. so those are the challenges that come with urbanization sometimes because mm -hmm. there's is, there's is opportunities that we appreciate but there are also work-life balance issues that need to be really checked if we look at the infrastructure for example um, we also need to be considerate of people living with disabilities our young people living with disabilities so mm -hmm. besides the economic uh, benefits of infrastructure for example are we looking at the social angle of you know supporting our young people also to get opportunities in urbanization uh, but also addressing really the needs of really most marginalized people like people living with different forms of disability mm -hmm. but in terms of migration as well moving to the cities or other countries we are also seeing increased family separation and breakups mm -hmm. so daddy or mommy goes to work in town x mm -hmm. then the children are left in the hands of a house help then they grow up by themselves yeah. So then while mommy and daddy are getting money to support the family, but it could be counterproductive because then they are not available. Children are left to their devices. Young people are left to the influences of their peers and other media platforms. So we see this needs to be checked in so, one way or the other. So yes. in that case, uh, where the, you know, the parents are away and mm -hmm. the children are being raised by the nanny, uh, is there really a way to counter this? Because it's also, you know, the tough economic times and you mm -hmm. have to provide for the mm -hmm. child. Maybe it's a single mom mm -hmm. in this situation or a single dad, or maybe the both parents, but they're not around. So yes. how do they counter that situation? It, it, it's difficult. It's really difficult uh, because then at the end of the day, you have to put bread on the table and you go to where the opportunities are in an environment where jobs are also not available, you know. But we make parents be aware that their roles, not all roles can be delegated. 
-hmm. There are few roles you can delegate. Okay. So if I'm working in Kisumu and my family is in Nairobi, how can I be deliberate enough to leave them within with a carer, not only the nanny, because then you have to look at support systems around you to guide them, to mold them when you're not there. But mm -hmm. some of this you cannot really delegate 100%. Mm -hmm. You really must think through very well. Is it better for me to move together with them to the new city where I'm going to? And if I have to leave them behind, who am I leaving them behind with? And what kind of values is this person, you know, ascribed to so that my children are not exposed to what is not right or what is against my value system? So it's really the parent being conscious, yes, I'm moving away and it is important for me to move away to put bread on the table. But who am I leaving my children with? Is it better for me to go with them? And sometimes families make the difficult of situation. One person leaves behind and, you know, mm -hmm. they move together. One of them has to stop their job as one works. That uh -huh. is deliberate attempt because, you know, in our world today, usipofunzo na mamako. So we can't really blame our young people for the mistakes that they make if we did not train them up, if we were not available. So we need to mm -hmm. know it is our responsibility regardless. So how do I navigate this as a parent? Because later on, as they get to 18, 19, if they make the wrong decisions, who will you blame? The nanny you left them with? Perhaps <laughs> okay. not. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's just ensuring when I'm not around, who is caring for my young people? Who's mm -hmm. caring for my children? Mm -hmm. uh, do they ask to the same family values that I have. Can I, for example, unfortunately in the world of today, even your grandparents are very far away from you, but you have to really think through who am I leaving them with mm -hmm. um, and how do I create moments then if I have to come over the weekends, if I have to come after every three months, does one of the partners have to stay at home and take care of the family as I go mm -hmm. in another country to work. Those are very intentional and deliberate. Unfortunately, as parents, it's our responsibility. There are things we cannot delegate. I love that. Yes. <laughs> the responsibility that can't be delegated. delegated. Yes. All right. And now uh, you said that you are part of some of the things that you address are the financial issues. Mm -hmm. So how do you empower parents from, mm -hmm. you know, humble backgrounds? Because mm -hmm. you're bringing them to, t uh, to teach them about how to nurture their children mm -hmm. and to create a safe environments for them. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, maybe what they're struggling with is finances and that's mm -hmm. what's causing the quarrel, the mm -hmm. violence. Mm -hmm. So how do you address this? How do you empower them? Thank you for that question. One of the things that I want to say up front, you don't have to be a rich parent to be a good parent. Okay. That <laughs> is critical for uh -huh. everybody to get to understand. Money is besides the point. It is important, mm -hmm. but you don't have to be a rich parent to be a good parent. We appreciate that parents are really struggling economically, and it is really stressing them and frustrating them. But one of the things we do in the family budgeting and financial literacy module or topic that we address with parents is first discussing safely about money you know it's not an easy topic between mm -hmm. people yeah. that you know we have uh, 10,000 shillings in this house what do we do together yeah. uh, with this money and our needs are this much so opening that space for the spouses mm -hmm. to be able to first safely talk about money to whether share, it is a yeah. thousand or two thousand <laughs> or a hundred thousand yeah. you have to create that space where people talk about money because yeah, people never so how do yeah. you bring these discussions to the fore so I'm from my chama I have 10,000 shillings mm -hmm. I think our family responsibilities for this month is xyz mm -hmm. what do you think we need to prioritize for mm -hmm. example so you bring them to that space when they first can talk about money and to look at what are their immediate needs what are their long-term needs and how can they plan so we also take them through you know budgeting process regardless of how much that money is at that mm -hmm. particular level and then for the most vulnerable then we go into you know financial literacy education business training entrepreneurship training so that they can engage in livelihood opportunities that can earn them income or increase their income at household level and then connect them to markets and give them in certain spaces we've also given them startup kits to really just jump start their businesses and those are really in the rural areas. For really vulnerable mm -hmm. families, we appreciate the government for the cash transfer system that they are giving to orphans and vulnerable children mm -hmm. and to the elderly. So this comes to support. But sometimes when there is money in the household, it doesn't mean it will be used for good. So mm -hmm. we also enable them have that discussion mm -hmm. of prioritization. We've seen places where, for example, we had growing a lot of cash crops 
when the men get the money they disappear from home <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you until know? the money is over until the money is <laughs> over and then they come back but even sometimes in urban areas end month there are people who disappear from their homes and you know come back. so we enable them have that conversation around money how can we plan around it to translate to family well-being mm. how do we ensure that you adequately supported to know how to budget uh, mm. within this money how can we encourage uh, both of them to sit down and talk about this it starts from open communication about mm -hmm. money this is what is available these are our needs let's prioritize this um, including the really basic foundational things around education where do we take our children to school based on our money mm -hmm. how do we plan for emergencies because this come people can be sick anytime yeah. uh funerals are part and parcel of our society today so there are also those welfare issues that are demanded upon us as mm -hmm. families to be able so if you open that space to enable them talk about money whether it's one thousand or two thousand see at you watch you a hundred shillings and it cannot be enough so mm -hmm. it's just saying you left me a hundred shillings things are really expensive in the market now uh, this is what I will I can be able to buy with a hundred shillings you know mm. sometimes it's you know saying okay fine let's go for shopping together mm -hmm. so that the men who also understand what it means to buy groceries what how much does this actually cost because money is a source of conflict okay you are 1,000 sure. shillings in the home oh, they month. expect a lot of things but oh, what can sure. 1,000 shillings do now so it's opening mm -hmm. that space exposing part partners to what is available, enabling them to talk about money, but also those trainings around business, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, to support them, um, build their businesses up, exposing uh -huh. them and linking them to markets and giving them business startups. All right. Yes. So back to, you know, protecting children, mm -hmm. how are you ensuring that their rights are protected in mm -hmm. creating the safe environment? So we are looking at uh, equipping parents to, you know, support children uh, to be safe at home. Mm -hmm to be safe in the community and to be safe at school. So those are environments where children and young people are at mm -hmm. any one particular time. So mm -hmm. when parents are knowledgeable of their roles and responsibilities and how they need to support and nurture their children and mm -hmm. having their discussion talk around discipline because sometimes abuse happens in the context of discipline. So there are consequences. You'll either be beaten up, sent yeah. away, or you know, given harsh, humiliating treatment. Those harsh words parents talk about. Bure kabisa, wewe ni kama. You know, those really demean our young people and make them yeah. feel hopeless, you know, selfless. So we really support parents on what constitutes abuse. Sometimes it's not only physical beating. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of sexual abuse that happens in the context of families with people that we closely trust. Mm -hmm. So young people are exposed to our relatives, our extended family members. We feel that they are safe, but sometimes those are the people. Statistics talk Actually, about mm -hmm. that people who abuse our children and, and young the, people are people the most known, closest. are the most closest. So giving parents that consciousness that even the people you live around with in your home, you need to be careful. You need to, we are not saying mm -hmm. all of them, but some yeah, of them so. are not well intentioned. So that is how we ensure parents are able to be knowledgeable to protect children's rights. But on the flip side, targeting children directly with life skills, part of the life skills education is also their rights so that they can be able to exercise their rights, uh, but also the responsibilities that come with those rights mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So if they're able to know uh, what is right and what is wrong and what should not be able to be done to them, then when it is done, they can be able to report it. They know this is an this abuse. Is no, this constitutes abuse and mm -hmm. I need to report it and this is what I expect from where I report. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you can report and nothing is happening. And that really discourages our young people for to report, you know. And we really advocate for youth-friendly services. Sometimes when our young people are abused and they go to the health facility, perhaps the attitudes uh, of the healthcare workers are not really supportive, mm -hmm. you know, Kenda Pale. And we have experienced a lot of uh, teenage uh, parents. Mm -hmm. You know, they got pregnant, they are raising children, they go to a health facility, and they are really not treated with uh, respect. respect. That and that yes, wametelesa. Mm -hmm but they are in that state, so they need to be supported and guided. So we also have parenting education for teenagers with parenting responsibilities because there are quite mm -hmm. a number in this country as well. So that is how we build the consciousness of parents of what constitutes abuse, 
what they can do to reduce the risk factors of abuse in home settings, what teachers can also do in school to reduce, because bullying in schools by peers, uh, punishment by teachers, whether it's physical or humiliating, those things happen. So mm. how do we also empower teachers to know what constitutes abuse, how they need to avoid it, where mm. they can report, and what actually happens when a teacher does abuse because there are consequences. Mm -hmm. And of course, our laws are very clear as a country. Um, you know, what constitutes abuse what happens when you abuse children in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So we, we really empower children on their rights through the Life Skills Platform and build the consciousness of parents and teachers on what constitutes abuse and what needs to be done to reduce the risk factors in those different settings so that our young people are not abused or exploited. Okay, so still speaking on what constitutes of abuse. Mm -hmm. So do you, um, you know, um, promote... Uh, just gentle, you know, polite speaking between the child and the parent when there's a problem? Or, okay, are you doing away with caning <laughs> completely? <laughs> because, you know, in the African setup, there has to be some caning, you know, to just mm -hmm. instill discipline. So mm -hmm. are you against this totally or is it just some gentle caning here and there? And <laughs> what is gentle? <laughs> that line is very gray. <laughs> uh -huh. But what we are saying, we need to understand it from the definition of discipline. Discipline is training up a child. It is not punishment. Yeah. Discipline is molding the right positive behavior that you want to see within that child. Mm -hmm. It's being intentional. This is how I want my child to grow up. This is the boundaries. These are the boundaries I am setting. And these are the consequences when you cross those boundaries. Because then yeah. when you're setting those boundaries and rules and training up children, molding them with the right mm -hmm. behavior, mm -hmm. then it is much more than you've done this, I'll beat you. Because sometimes we beat our children mm -hmm. or we, we punish our young people and they're wondering, why am I being punished? I was not told this is wrong. I've yeah. come back at six o'clock. I was never told <laughs> coming past six is a problem. Yeah. So together with your young people, we would advocate for you to sit down with them and say, these mm -hmm. are the do's and don'ts in this house. And this is why we are saying it is not okay for you to come at seven. Mm -hmm. Our area is dangerous. You can be exposed to elements mm -hmm. that are not really good. Uh, you can be abused when you come back late. So in this house, we are coming back at 7 p.m. every day. And if in the event that you're late, let us know where you are. You know, it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. So if you don't train me up that way, if mm -hmm. I come at 8, why would you punish me? So we are encouraging that conversation. Mm -hmm. Then when they cross the boundaries for example. And yeah. right now we have so many boundaries that our youth, young people can also push. As you know, rules sometimes they say are to be broken. Mm -hmm. So they, they test boundaries. We are asking parents to be consistent because today if I say you come at seven and you mm -hmm. come at nine and I don't do anything, then tomorrow they come at the ten. Same thing. So consistency in reinforcing those boundaries and mm -hmm. the do's and don'ts and the consequences that you've said. So if your young person says stays on their phone, the whole day, the whole week, they are not doing household calls, their yeah. room is in chaos. You say, mm. you know, if you do this, then I take the phone for two, three days. You'll be off air. You'll not be online. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the consequences that we are looking for. And we have really seen the negative consequences of corporal punishment, you know, the beating. Yeah, the so that's why we're saying, where are the boundaries? How can you know? <laughs> so we encourage parents, before you beat, for example, breathe in, Breathe, breathe out. out. Take your five minutes away and come mm -hmm. back. Believe you me, you will not beat. Because we beat sometimes out of anger and frustration. We mm -hmm. feel that this child has angered us, not because of what they have done. Mm -hmm. It's the frustration and the anger. Yeah. So we encourage parents, yeah. try it at home. And I'm telling parents to also try it. Akifanya yo kitumbaya. Breathe in, breathe out. Enda kwa jikoni yama wapi 10 minutes, 5 minutes, then come back your reaction will be different because corporal punishment is reactionary, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, yeah. and it enforces immediate compliance for the child, but they really never understand why am I being beaten. Ama wanazoya, mm -hmm. atanichapa itaisha. itaisha. You've had children talking about atanichapa itaisha, kwani nini, nitaenda nyumbani atapiga kelele itaisha. itaisha. So you've not really done the reinforcing of good behavior mm -hmm. that you really want to. So take a step back, breathe in. Mm -hmm. When you come back with your same child, your reaction will be automatically different. <laughs> All right. Yes. Okay, as we come to a close, maybe some parents are, you know, raising their children out of past traumas and they're subjecting it to their children. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with this first before teaching mm -hmm. them ways to nurture their own children? Mm -hmm. 
part of the parenting sessions and when we are interrogating family relationships, part of the mm. initial discussions we are having with parents, how are you parented? Was it good? Was it bad? What are those good things that you think are still valuable that you can do in your normal parenting? And what are those no-no? And mm. some of them, believe you me, just the topic we've discussed, will say, Aki mimi nili <laughs> and I didn't you know? like it. <laughs> so it opens up that conversation like, I, mm. then perhaps why am I beating my children? Because my personal experience, and they can really remember vividly, there was a day, nilikuja nimechelewa, iyo siku nilinyoroshwa. <laughs> and I didn't like, I remember it. It's so clear. And it was perhaps 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So then you open up that discussion of, so why are we doing it to our kids if we feel it's going to be traumatic, mm -hmm. you know, and witnessing violence, even in their own personal settings as they were growing up when they were young people also has an influence. So that is why we're encouraging parents to get help. Mm -hmm. And the peer group approach really opens that door for reflections mm -hmm. and sharing that this is how I was parented. Some aspects were good, some were really not good. And I'd like to be different mm -hmm. with my children so that they are not going through the same things. On the counter side, we see parents who now go to the extremes and say, hey, Mimi was a Ziwangu, they were not present, they were not there. So now I come here and I want my children. And they are so permissive. So mm -hmm. they allow children everything because they were not allowed. Yeah. Uh, you know, they give a lot of gifts, uh, which is really counterproductive. You know, their, their love language is gifts, so I need to really support my children, allow them to do what they want. It becomes really counterproductive. Mm. You know, it's parenting, it's not about presents. Mm. It's being present. It's being pr physically present. Being physically present. Emotionally, yes. Yes, like but that space we create for parents, they're able to reflect back on how they were parented and address their own traumas and then say, okay, now I'm at a place where I know there are certain things I went through that is affecting how I'm parenting. And now I'm willing to be part of these sessions to change myself first. Mm -hmm. And then now I can give my all mm -hmm. to my children. So it opens their eyes on... There are certain things they do, not because they want to, but it's because they experience the same. And it is counterproductive. I need to be different and intentional with my children if I want them to grow up, to be successful, to be responsible, mm -hmm. to be people of good character in okay. our society today. So would you say that your program, you know, targets the mind, you know, of the parents' mindset first it, in order to change behavior yeah it's a behavior change program it's planned behavior so we are not telling parents what to do mm -hmm. there's no manual for parenting <laughs> miss stephanie you children know, yeah. even within your one home children are very different you cannot use the same method for every other young person in that household mm. so it's opening them up to reflect about what kind of goal they want for their children and how do they are they becoming deliberate to enable their children get to that goal mm. so it's it's touching them fast it is also improving their own self as a person mm -hmm. dealing with those issues that they experience whether they're relationship issues whether conflict issues whether it's self-esteem and self-care issues mm -hmm. so they deal with those first and then they come to that place where they now become conscious that hey I need to be a better parent. Mm -hmm. And we are not saying all parents are bad. Sometimes it's just frustrations and stress that make us do things that we regret later. Mm -hmm. um, but then these opportunities provide the space for self first to reflect, heal, learn, and appreciate that I have a lot of responsibilities, but I can't delegate these responsibilities. It is mine, and I need to be intentional to guide my child to who I want them to become. Mm -hmm. yes. And I would say maybe this uh, you know, method would work for a parent who has one child equally to a parent who has 10 children. Yes. Because you know that it starts with self first and then yes. now uh, on how to parent. So now, what are some of the... Uh, success stories, maybe you can mm -hmm. mention too, mm -hmm. that, that you're most proud of as an organization? Well, th there are quite a number, but one of the things that uh, we have seen quite work well for us is the appreciation of how big and serious mm -hmm. parenting is. So a man, um, we were having a program in Western Kenya, and then, of course, when we started the program, the men were like, Ii ni kazi ya wamama. Yeah, Kama ni parenting, malezi na makuzi, ii ni kazi ya kina mama. So when their wives came to the, to the parenting sessions, when they went back home, after the three sessions, the man came. 
<laughs> and said, you know what, I need to go through this. Unfortunately, or fortunately, they, he had several wives. So at some point, of course, there was a lot of chaos in his household and he could not be able to manage the mm -hmm. chaos in his household with all his children from the different wives. But when the wives attended these sessions, then it was quite easy for mm -hmm. the wives to collaborate together because now they have found themselves in that space. There's <laughs> nothing they can be able to do about it. Mm -hmm. And he really appreciated the fact that conflict management in his home was easy. Communication was opened up. For the first time, all his children from the different wives were able to sit down discuss and see even eat together very simple things that we take for granted mm -hmm. so it really brought family separation as a result of this program has really been reduced and conflict so bringing together and the man coming to those sessions and mm -hmm. inviting other men he is actually the ambassador <laughs> of okay. other men attending parenting sessions and seeing mm -hmm. it is not only our women this is we a joint there, responsibility. The other aspect is really children opening up about abuse. Mm -hmm. Because when the parents are um, open and are op creating that space, a child can say, so-and-so did something to me mm -hmm. and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Then the parent takes the risk. Before, we never used to know because our children are passive. So there are so many case studies that we have where parents are discovering what their children are going through, including abuse. And now they are taking action to create their homes safe. There are quite a number of cases that we have taken to the fore. Or neighbors who have been part of the parenting program are saying, hey, ICS, in that house, I think something is happening. Mm -hmm. Come and check. Wow. So people, bystanders are no longer bystanders. If they attend the program, they are proactive enough to come mm -hmm. and say, kindly support this family. I think there's a lot of things that are happening and the children are not safe in that particular environment. Last is also about the sharing of roles. And Believe you me, we are in <laughs> Africa, but we are seeing this happen. It's Supporting happening. your wife in the house does not mean you're less of a man. Mm -hmm. Actually, you're more of a it man now. It doesn't lower your ego. It doesn't <laughs> lower your ego and your masculinity in uh -huh. any way. And actually, everybody wants a nice family. Yeah. Everybody wants a peaceful family. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, our men sometimes will do it, but they will not expose it out there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> you know, but they all want to have healthy relationships and peace in the home. There's quite a lot happening in our homes privately and silently, mm -hmm. but these platforms actually give us that opportunity to vent off and find solutions mm -hmm. to these very complex things, but in our Yes. All right. What is your vision for uh, this country, you know, for the mm -hmm. families, mm -hmm. yeah, as an organization? Well, for us, we believe that every child should be able to reach their full developmental potential. Mm -hmm. And parents are the main, you cannot delegate, but the government needs to have in place very good policies. We know there is the National Family Protection and Preservation Policy that is in cabinet. Mm -hmm. We hope that it's going to be passed very soon. Mm -hmm. And we hope that the national parenting program will be reached. And our dream is that it is taught. I mean, mm -hmm. in one, at one point, we will become parents. Yes. So why can't it be one of the critical topics we address in university or college so that we exactly. are prepared? Mm -hmm. So it's our young true. people, before they get into marriage, why can't they get the basics of yeah. what does it mean to be married mm -hmm. and to be a parent? And the only way we can catch them perhaps in our tertiary institutions where they are and teach them a bit about communication, conflict management, mm -hmm. healthy relationships, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Our religious platforms also have a role in guide because their family really is, is one of their, their, their platforms to be able to encourage, inspire, and guide them in the right way. So we really hope that as a country, the National Parenting Program will be rolled out so that each and every parent or those who intend to be parents mm -hmm. are guided because, I mean, akuna manyo, yes. but then <laughs> you can be able to be supported, to reflect together with others. I know if I'm experiencing this with my child, there's a parent who already experienced this and this is how they, they managed it. So our vision and our goal is to see the government really make this because as an organization we can reach many but mm -hmm. not as many if the government really takes this up and mm -hmm. supports families and parents in their role create those platforms within government within religious institutions 
within our education system for our young people to be prepared for marriage and for parenthood. Najua sasa zingine tunafikiria ni harusi tu. Then ukiingia kule nyumbani it's never happy, you know, thereafter. Yeah. Then we need to be prepared really for the role that is coming ahead, but it is possible. There are families that have made it with or without money. I said it you mm -hmm. don't have to be a rich parent to be a good parent. Yeah, good parent. Yes. Okay, where can people find you on social media for those that mm -hmm. have questions or just want to talk to you? Yeah, we can be found online on all the platforms. We mm. are on FB, we are on Twitter, we are on LinkedIn at ICSSP, Investing in Children and Their Societies. So just uh, follow the hashtag also Skillful Parenting. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of information that we share uh, on that platform on different topical issues around mm. parenting. So at ICSSP, you will find us there. Okay. And we look forward to interacting with the young people and with the parents and caregivers to make this world a better place. Uh -huh. yes. So now as you finish, uh, this is your camera, speak mm -hmm. to the young people, those who are parents and those mm -hmm. that are preparing to be parents. Mm -hmm. uh, we really want to take this opportunity to encourage our young people. All is not lost. We can start where we are today. For our parents and caregivers, we create that space for our young people to engage and interact with us at household level. Let us model a healthy relationship, healthy behaviors that we want to see our young people uh, emulate from us. So as parents, we really need to be role models. And for our young people, tuelewe kama wazazi. Sazingine maybe tuko analog, but we are trying our best to be able to, to understand you, to learn you and support you. So we really want to encourage you to continue joining those sessions that are available in your communities, in your spaces, in your churches to learn more about critical skills of life, communication, negotiation, critical uh, thinking, decision making, self-protection. And we will also, you know, create these platforms to be a lot more child friendly for you so that you can be able to become the best that you can be able to be. But we really thank you for taking on this responsibility in a challenging world to also come up and show the world what you can be able to do. And we hope that through various platforms, we can be able to nurture your talents in so many ways. So thank you so much, Ms. Stephanie, for also having us on this platform. Thank you for coming on board and for sharing with us uh, the insights in parenting and creating safe and nurturing environments for our children. Thank you. So that has been Beatrice Ogutu representing, uh, she is the director, the executive director of ICSSP that is investing in children and their societies. It's an organization. Well, uh, we'll bring a wrap to this first conversation, but we'll be right back with yet another interesting discussion. Don't go too far. We'll be uh, back after the break. Thank you. <laughs>